Hello lads, today we have a 15 Volkswagen Tiguan 1.4 TSI Blue Motion and fault with this car is that the coolant is dropping every once or twice a week uh, customer reports and uh, also they said to me there on the last drive the check engine light came on now it's not on now at the moment it went off again with a uh, cycle of the key but we have turbo supercharger under boost cylinder one misfire detected cylinder four misfire detected cylinder disabling and we have random multiple cylinder misfires detected okay so i had a look at underneath of the car had it up in the air it's on the lift there now um no signs of no water stains no coolant stains doesn't look like anything is hitting the ground water or coolant but yet the jar is going low once twice a week it takes the fill of the jar right so if we follow down water hoses down there in at the back of the intake manifold there is a cooler going in there you know to get access to her to see that cooler i took out the boost pressure sensor and that is wet with coolant and with my boroscope gone in that hole where the boost sensor goes i can see coolant in the intake manifold so that's my coolant leak found that is definitely um that cooler going into the intake manifold is definitely leaking now with all that coolant going into the intake manifold i would probably say it's maybe after doing something funny to this boost sensor getting all drowned and wet and probably after fouling up the plugs and there's all our uh, codes we have so our leak is found we need that cooler i don't know can that be got separate now or is it a whole intake manifold but that's the diagnosis now anyway uh, so no coolant hitting the ground but losing coolant through that cooler going into the intake manifold and then that's going into the engine so um that's the problem found um so i have to get my hands i'll have to do a bit of research and maybe try order can I just order the cooler or do I have to get the whole intake manifold? I do not know. But um, yeah, we'll revisit that um, and see what's available to us and get whatever we need. Uh, and we'll change that. Okay, lads. Okay, guys. So just as a workaround, what I'm after doing is I'm after joining the two hoses together rather than them coming in and out of the cooler. Um, to join together now just to keep this car going on the road today is now Saturday and I ain't gonna get no parts for this car today anyway so just to keep this car on the road I've joined the two pipes and I've taken that cooler out of the circuit really um, so this car should be able to go should be able to drive for the next couple of days while I'm waiting on stuff without any water leaks and without any water getting into the intake manifold or into the cylinders or anything like that so we'll see uh, we'll finish the video off when we get a new cooler and uh, yeah okay talk to you soon okay hello lads the tig one is back into me um, and i have my hands on the new cooler there it is unpackaged there it is numbers item number part number for anyone who wants it so that's going into the back of that intake manifold now the car has been out back with the customer for a week on the road and the report is back in now to, to actually do this job but i left it out there last week with that kind of setup i joined the two pipes i think i've shown you on the video um, so the cooler in the intake manifold was out of the circuit and the customer uh, drove with if you look at that coolant level did not drop 
within the week of driving. No messages on the dash to say uh, coolant level low, um, and nor did uh, she get any check engine lights or drivability issues. Um, so that's just more evidence, if we needed any, that that cooler is 100% leaking and uh, causing, uh, you know, fouling up plugs, maybe uh, drivability issues with all that water getting into the intake manifold. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're going to change this now. To do it, look, you can see a few screws or bolt holes going into the back of the intake manifold. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it there though. I'd say it's, we're going to have to remove this intake manifold and then fit this when it's out, uh, out on the bench. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to crack on, I'm going to try to do that. So it's a intake manifold removal to change this cooler here. Okay, I'll keep you posted as I go. Okay, lads, there's my intake manifold off. Actually, wasn't too bad to do at all now. What I would say is just be careful of your few plastic pipes. Even this one, I did want to remove that one. But I just, it was quite tight on the intake manifold and you'd be terrified with them little plastic pipes that they'd snap and break. So I did take it off from that end and that pipe came with the intake manifold for me. Got a few plastic pipes that I did remove going in around the top. So yeah, I would just say, just be careful of the plastic pipes <clears throat> that they don't snap on you. Um, and then in the intake manifold, we have uh, two, four, Three, oh, sorry, five. We have five triple square bolts. Um, and that's kind of it there, yeah. So quite handy to change or remove. Um, there's a part number, again, if anyone wants it, that's on the old one. So I'm gonna remove these torques and out will come that cooler and that cooler will go back in. Okay, we're getting there, lads. Not too bad to do, so far. Okay, that's just another little test I'm running here. I have the old EGR cooler just dumped in a bucket of water there. And one pipe is blocked off and the other pipe is running to my midi vac. And as I'm giving that pressure there, filling uh, the cooler with air, you can see bubbles flying out of there, sorry. Over there somewhere. So maybe just a bit overkill, but it just does again, once again, confirm that this thing has failed. So in there somewhere is my leak. But anyway, look, that cooler is dead in the water and uh, just start fitting this one there now. Okay, lads, there is the new cooler fitted to the intake manifold. Uh, very, very simple. Six uh, T30 self-tapping torque screws holding it to the intake manifold. Little gasket behind that, which I didn't get new with my cooler. So make sure if you are doing it, that your old one is in good health, which my one is. Um, and that's it, this intake manifold now is going back on the engine and yeah should be should be good to go fairly soon okay that's that's me uh, done and uh, the sig one is all back together um, no boats left over coolant level topped up which i didn't lose a whole lot but i'm careful about that um, this car is up on the lift there, as you can see, but I didn't have to go underneath this car at all to do any of this. Um, the intake manifold came off um, from up top. I didn't have to go underneath uh, at all. So if you are doing one of these, again, yeah, it can all be done from up top. You don't need a lift or you don't need to get down on the ground. Um, yeah, that's about it there. This is what I used to block off the EGR cooler. 
have used that just to join the two pipes to get all this dust up like down the line around the garage. Um, and that's what got that up and running. And uh, yeah, so that's it. The water and keep on uh, done. Coolant leak found and fixed. And hope this video helps someone out. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. And uh, please like and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you again soon in the next one. Bye.